Welcome to Roll For It. It's a D&D podcast of random monsters and epic adventures. Each episode, we will roll a D100 to determine which monster we will encounter. This season, every monster is woven into a tale set at sea. Yarr! We also level up every episode, so our characters will get to test out cool new magic and abilities as we face tougher challenges. Whether you're brand new to the game or a D&D veteran, thank you for tuning in to Roll, Roll for, for it. it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for episode nine of Roll for It. Y'all ready for this? Season three is almost over for Roll For It. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's going to be sad. If you're going to miss us as much as we're going to miss you, there are ways to keep up with Roll For It when the season's over. Way number one, Patreon. There's bonus shows, bonus content. If we can get 50 patrons, right now we're at 25, we are going to do a three to four episode season two miniseries, a lot like 21 Mum Street with Graham Graham, Arak, and Zula. We're really excited, but we really need your support to make it happen. The second thing you can do, go on our website, sign up for our newsletter, Durban's Mail. That is completely free. Durban's Mail is a lot of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. There's stats for a lot of the monsters that we come up against. Keeping you up to date on what's new with D&D as well as the pod. You can join that on rollforitpod.com at the bottom of the page. Are you doing a tuba? <laughs> <laughs> right. My phone just beeped as I did this ad and the Royal joined Patreon. Now we have 26 out of 50. Let's that, go. That ad works, man. Man, oh my god. That was such it's a crazy. Great I just heard this advertisement about <laughs> Patreon and Honestly, supporting I'm, Roll for I'm it. I'm literally wanna... doing the same thing <laughs> as we speak. So you guys. we're here. I'm here with three of the greatest adventurers of all time. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? Wait, where are they? Yeah, I only see Lucy. That's one. With three of the most mediocre adventurers to ever play D D. Yeah! I like that. I like that. What's up? I'm Lexi, I play Yue. She is an artificer tiefling, and she has a little bit of a deep dark past. She's running from some people, and she's kind of gotten her friends into trouble. But she's doing her best to to be a good guy if she can. Maybe we'll see. It's the royal playing the moon elf ranger. The beast of a ranger. From the questions that I had saying that the ranger's the weakest, I just want to point it out that he is the beast <laughs> in this campaign. Wait, what happened? Like, did somebody call you weak? I will mess them up. We did a social media FAQ. We were like, ask any question you have for any of our cast members. And three, maybe four people immediately were like, why did you pick a ranger? Rangers suck. Rangers are the worst class. To all you non-believers, Kanar shooting those arrows, doing double damage, <laughs> and he's looking to uh, just live his life as an adventurer, as one of the strongest people <laughs> in this campaign. I'm Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> I play Mo, and I hate doing these intros because she's like a pretty simple character. I don't know. She's a cat, and she's a pirate, and she's a captain, and she <laughs> is doing her best, and that's just what I say every week because it's just always true. I'm the dungeon master. My name is Jake and I like a lot of different colors. I used to like orange and blue the best and I liked them together, but now I think that together that's kind of really too much. My favorite number is 47. When Jake says that his favorite number is 47, like, oh my, you guys, every time that number pops up. All the time. It's not more than any other number, but yes, we have to have a celebration every time. <laughs> All right, this is episode nine, which means we are all level nine. Uh, real quick, what did you guys get new? I got a lightning arrow. Is that better than acid arrow? Yeah, lightning arrow does a whole bunch of damage when it works. I have a new mastermind ability. It is called Insightful Manipulator, which if that is not a mo descriptor, I don't know what is. I got a lot of new spells. I'm very excited. And I'm doing some cool infusions today, man. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never made that sound in my life. But <laughs> <laughs> it sounded so natural. You guys ready to begin? I hope so. I'm scared. <gasps> Previously, on Roll For It. The group found themselves separated when Yue, aka the demon, stole the adventurer's mark and swiped the magic lamp to go and get her wish. Mo, aka the stray cat, was whisked away by a unicorn named Ozzy who showed her that her temporary in-town home had been destroyed by Robert Coward days earlier. Ozzy then transported Mo aboard the Fiery Revenge, 
a familiar ship that he said could actually be a proper home for her. Back in Saida, Kanar, aka the Carpenter, had a chat with his grandmother Thestina and a wandering turtle named Graki, who each had a lot to say about the adventuring life and companionship. With Kanar's new magic map from Thestina and Mo once again in command of the Fiery Revenge, the pair caught up to Yue just in time to aid her against a yellow musk creeper and its army of zombie hosts. Reunited, the amassed crew of both ships are now only 10 days away from the mysterious X marking the magic lamp's destination and the fulfillment of their wishes three. I feel good. Do you feel good? I feel good. I feel good. Let's go. So you guys are going to journey into the sea of ice, way to the east, way to the south. Your journey takes you near and past the mysterious lands of Earth End. That's UA's original hideaway destination before discovering Mo Kanar and the magic lamp. So in episode one, that's where she was going before we kidnapped her to a random island. Yeah, right. that's where okay. she hired the fiery revenge to transport her. As you sail past it, you see the famous continuous lava falls of the blue volcano, barely visible through the steam that it creates as it pours off of an ever-expanding cliff into the ocean. Some of the steam reaches your fleet as you turn further south. Burnt Bill takes in the sight. Enjoy the warm. It all be bitter colds from here. I thought you've never even been out of the wild sea. How do you know? We're going to the sea of ice. Okay, well, yeah. It's, it's literally ice. cold. Okay, okay, okay. It's made of ice. Okay, okay. It's I down see. south, like to the South Pole. Yes, I accepted the first answer. You and this mean. is a volcano. This is what you do. It this was is cold what... before we got here, and now... I think we just need some time apart. We just need a little space. We've been spending too much time together. Hi, Captain. Sorry, Captain. Oh man, I already miss him. Bill! <laughs> <laughs> so both ships are with us? Yeah, you guys are. Yeah, we got a fleet. Uh, a fleet of two Hell ships. I, hey, we had five people on our crew. You guys want to know how many you have now all together? Yeah. yeah. 47. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's your favorite number. <laughs> we win. All right. Kanar's looking over his map in his crow's nest in his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. It's freezing up there right now. But, I have my cloak and Durbin's with me. Yeah. <laughs> and UA, you're also aboard the Adventurer's Mark. Right now, Mo, you are on the Fiery Revenge because you've been dividing your time between the two ships. Oh my god. I hope that we're shell phone texting like all the time. I have separation anxiety. You get a message from me saying, hey, just letting you know, Robert, is he's still following us. You also get a message from me saying, oh, well, I know you're all cold, but I'm literally like a demon. So I'm like not even cold right now. It has like little demon emojis. <laughs> I send a text back to UA that says <laughs> priority lol lol and then the Santa Claus emoji because I don't know how to use the phone very well. Mo, why are you sending me a Santa Claus and the lol? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about Robert and I need you to focus up here. <laughs> I grab a rope on the fiery revenge and I swing over to the adventurer's mark crawl up to the crow's nest to respond to Kanar's text. How do you know he's following us? So we're reunited all aboard the Adventurer's Mark. Reunited yes. and it feels so good. So good. This map here, I open it because it's like a scroll. Yeah, Robert's ship, Tidebringer, has been added to Kanar's map from Thistina, so you can watch it move, and it is following you. Now, you don't know how he's tracking you, but with magic, there could be a number of ways. He is slowly gaining on you, but he won't catch you for at least a week. So you have plenty of time to plan an ambush or even maybe to reach your destination before he arrives. He's about a week's out. Okay, how far are we from this ice island lamp magic place? About 10 days wins with it. Burnt, Bill, that is not good. This guy sucks. I really would like to be on land before we run into anyone like Robert Coward. So how can you get us there faster than 10 days? We have options. Are we doing battle planning? Can we do it downstairs? Yeah, I know you're mad at me, but like, I have gifts. Maybe you'll like me more after that. You got gifts? What do you got? Tell us about them. Well, they need to come downstairs first. Are the gifts more or less than $20? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I didn't use money. <laughs> I don't. Homemade gifts. Yay. Hey, do you want it or not? I guess. Okay. Okay, so then we climb down the crow's nest i'm just letting you know like if he's tracking us it's either through me or the ship 
I'm not going to say we're going to abandon the Avengers, Mark. The Royal just made the scariest face. I care yeah. for the ship. <laughs> we're not going to leave you in the middle of the icy water either, so. Captain, have an idea. Yes. We'll use the Ray Frost Blast to freeze the water behind us. That way, when he comes into it, it slows him down even more, giving us more days and more opportunity to set something up. Okay. I was promised <laughs> gifts. Right, right, right. Now. Okay. I have some infused items to give you your rapier mo uh you get a plus one bonus to attack and damage rules it's called radiant weapon like a lightsaber kind of you basically just got a lightsaber this is worth climbing down from the crow's nest can I, may i see your short blades you're... oh yeah i gave you a little bud from the yellow musk creeper yes still in its vial can i have it real quick oh. i want to sure so i take this bud and I'm like, oh, gosh, I need a freaking table. <laughs> you want me to hold one of the things? Yeah, hold one of the okay. things. And then I take the little yellow bud out and I smash it. And this beautiful yellow energy swoops over the blades. Oh, homebrew. When you crit with those, you're going to deal an extra damage die. And right. the psychic damage. Extra, extra. First, Kanar gave everyone presents. And now you always give everyone presents. And they're starting to feel like very self-conscious about it. So she slips away while they're trying to figure out who's going to hold the short swords which takes a minute she finds this rusty penny on the floor and then takes the handkerchief out of burnt bill's back pocket which has some embroidery on it it's also got some some burnt bill on it and she takes Yue's hands <laughs> Yue, i give you this lucky penny it does not grant you any abilities except my love you're welcome oh uh, i i love this lucky penny thank you and then Kanar, mm -hmm. to you I give you this handkerchief. It is hand embroidered by someone. I'm guessing it was Burnt Bill's mom. It gives you Burnt Bill's mom's love. Oh, th thank you. May it protect you in tough times. Also, if Burnt Bill sees this, you might have to give it back to him. I'm sorry. Ha, <laughs> nice. I don't have to give my penny to anybody. <laughs> you guys each gift. gain five friendship points. After <laughs> um, this, by the way, everybody, after we have this 25 25? points. Anyways, um, hope you guys like your new weapon stuff. So you guys progress <laughs> through the sea of ice. And now it's the night before you guys are set to arrive. The remainder of the crew sits around a fire on deck using hip toes. He's the half giant who's the bosun of the fire revenge recover from the wind he's a huge guy and his body is very much exposed so mo tells burnt bill to go get the extra sail mm -hmm. and we wrap it around his shoulders as like a blankie Aww. all right you roll him up in a giant cocoon that lays out on the deck and tiptoe says did you really fight an army of mean locks in the midst of the wild sea yeah i did it was the dead of night and suddenly i woke up to a skinny young elf banging on the door. Mo, Mo, there's something on the ship. Yeah, that guy is no longer with us. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> the rest of the crew leans in to hear more as you continue. <laughs> and it's really the first time that she's gotten to tell a story that's true. She almost exaggerates, but then she's like, you know, I don't even have to because this is a dope story. And then she gets to the end and she says, and then... As the dog was licking up the rest of the grease, everyone said, good job, Mo." <laughs> UA was kind of okay with how she was told in the story, so she starts the clap. Yeah, Kanar joins in. Yeah, yeah, there's some applause, some aye eyes. <laughs> and Tiptoes goes, man, I hate those fae fuckers. <laughs> Sneaking up on you in the night, just, whew, just icky. Kanar, you were watching Festina's map intently. And you see Robert Coward's blip creeping ever closer. He'll reach you tomorrow for sure. You guys sail through the rest of the night. Captain Mo, there's something in the sky. What? A sky? A guy? The sky. The sky. There's something in the sky. Might be a guy. Come look. And she rolls out of bed onto the floor and keeps rolling towards the door just to be dramatic. So on deck, you see... <laughs> On deck, you see that you are now sailing the last stretch of water before the X. There are tall cliffs of ice and stone on either side of you, 
as you approach in the middle of a deep, watery canyon. Big Eyes hands you his telescope binoculars, and sure enough, you see, whirring overhead, a metallic gold spherical thing with wings. It's about the size of a large basketball, not quite a beach ball. The snitch. A gigantic golden snitch. <laughs> We just see three wizards fly by <laughs> and kick it. <laughs> and you see that it has a single eye on its spherical head. And it looks kind of like a clockwork Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. Cutest monster we've ever <laughs> rolled. Yeah, it's uh, kind of adorable just chilling up in the sky like, hey. It flies to the cliff and is watching your ship from the shadows of a large rock. How long has this thing been here? It's been flying around above us for about 10 minutes. Someone go get me UA. UA, Captain Moe wants to see you. Oh, big eye. What pleasure. <laughs> you guys being so weird. I just haven't talked to big eye for before, and I'm really excited. It is fun to say. Yeah, that's why I said. Everyone who's listening to this podcast, say big eye board out loud and tell me that you're not infinitely a happier person. Sorry yeah. to wake you, Euphoria. This is big eye board. <laughs> big eye board. I was told to rouse you for the captain. Thank you, big eye board. Lead the way. Big Eye Bort. <laughs> Kanara, you see UA and Big Eye Bort heading over to the Fire Revenge. UA, I need you to do the thing where you talk really loud like the devil and you sound scary so that this thing will hear me because I want to know if it can understand this. Oh, yes. My thaumaturgy. Okay, Mo, what would you like me, or excuse me, Captain, what would you like me to say to our golden snitch? Um, say hello there circular friend just say it would you like mm. trust me i have way more charisma than you say hello there circular friend <laughs> and try to like keep the voice like the least devilly that you can okay <clears throat> red leather yellow leather, red leather. <laughs> hello, hello there circular thing or person friend friend, friend. Oh, man. I, I am Euphoria, Euphoria here, here with Captain, Captain Moe, Moe and, oh, my, my friend Kanar's over there. there. We're, Going just, we're just saying hello. <laughs> At first, this thing seems to cower a little bit, but then it keeps its head out, looks left and right down the canyon and back, and then flies down and duck and rolls, <laughs> loudly clatters onto the deck of the ship. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Mo, <laughs> Mo, it's falling. It for sure looks like a cat toy. It just takes <laughs> over and she pounces on it and stands up hugging this. Mo, Mo, get off of the circular friend. It's very heavy, Mo. It takes all of your weight to lift it a few feet and then you fall over. Yeah. It feels like a giant basketball of metal. And as it backs away from you. I get low and I go, shh, shh. I don't know what that was and I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but we, we are here for discussion. I slightly alter my appearance for one minute okay. to look friendly. Uh, maybe like a distant cousin or something. Just like a like a Snapchat filter. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I literally put a Snapchat filter on myself where it's like, like little hearts. Your eyes get like, a little bit too yeah. big. And I'm like, hi, what are you doing up there? and it beeps and whirs and gestures around desperately as it tries to communicate. He needs um, help. <laughs> Where's the well, Lassie? <laughs> oh my God, I <laughs> wish <laughs> the world could see this. No, it's charades. I suck at charades, pay attention. <laughs> Pointing at us. <laughs> Pointing at everybody. You wanna be in the crew? <laughs> no, not the crew, not the crew. Walking? <laughs> Our oh. heart will explode if we walk. You will explode. You, you are a ball. At the meantime, Kanar, <laughs> Kanar jumps out of the, the crow's nest and catches a rope to swing across to the fire event. <laughs> Guys, I, I think this thing wants us to follow it. DM of a podcast, the charade bit is a very strange choice. <laughs> this ball sounds like a chicken. And then he mimes walking like an army. There's an army of balls? There's an army of you. <laughs> of your species. <laughs> they don't like Kanal? No, they, they don't, don't like, like you. you. <laughs> Why? Aww, he's on do you want to join our crew? <laughs> oh, do you want a snack? I have snacks. You're an artificer. You can't talk to technology. <laughs> I don't think he's technology. <laughs> he's a machine. <laughs> Captain, looks like there's more of them coming. And the orb-shaped creature dives for the stairs below deck, loudly falling down them. 
guys, I think he's a little robot serial killer, and here comes the cops to get him. No, no, maybe. <laughs> Ahead, you see that the icy canyon walls turn to a thick, smooth stone. The cliffside has been carved out into a perfectly symmetrical, grand, rectangular archway. The large archway is centered around a large stone door with intricate geometric carvings and there is a path of water in the center of this impressive structure that the adventurer's mark could turn into and sail right up to the entrance. The Fire of Revenge would have a much more difficult time of it. Small, half-spherical alcoves are dug into the canyon walls on either side of this entrance, and in each of those alcoves are creatures just like the one on your ship. They are scanning the horizon, and when they see your ships approaching, they point an arm at you and beep continuously. Uh, they're beep, like smoke beep, detectors. This was like... so damn hot. It's getting worse. And Big Eye Board is like, Captain, we're here. This is the X. Is with these beepy guys? Tick yeah, this, this doorway, drop whatever this is. Hey, drop the anchor here. Drop the anchor, crew. So the two ships lay anchor, and you guys actually hear the fluttering of wings as a number of figures begin to approach from above. I think we can't get through it unless these like little fiery things let us in or circle things, Mike Wazowski's. So you're telling me we have to go through that gate with those beeping things to get to where this lamp needs to go. That's where the X is. Seems to be. We could keep going around these uncharted icicles for another day or two, but we haven't seen anything like this big creepy place where an axe would be on a map. Guys, the lab is vibrating. We're here. 12 flying metal basketballs, exactly like the one hiding below your deck, approach your ship. These basketballs are called monodromes. They are a specific type of modrons, which Modern? vary in shape and size, but are universally made of metal and have humanoid mouths and eyes. The 12 monodrones are flying in two separate clusters, and as they get closer, you see that each cluster is carrying three duodrones, which are cube-shaped modrons that rotate in the middle like a Rubik's Cube. And those duodrones are carrying two tridrones, which are inverted pyramid-shaped with three arms and javelins. Wait, so this is like one of those babies, like... You know, you have to put the circle on the circle and the triangle on the, <laughs> the square. It's kind of like that. Like, so the basketballs drop off their metal friends on either side of the ship, one group to the left and one group to the right. Are you looking for your friend? Mo, aren't you like a master linguist or something? Could you like try to learn the language? Usually I build off of other languages, but I don't know what I'm going to build on. <laughs> Mo, you spot two cube-shaped creatures with wings watching from above. They are the commanders of this group. They are quadrones, and they each carry a bow and a quiver of arrows. Are they gonna attack us? The ones carrying the bows don't have arrows at the ready. They're just they're just carrying them for now. Hard heart. Can you go get whatever's hiding in our basement? Just bring him up. Don't let them have him yet. <laughs> I'm kind of down to give him up. I think that's our problem. Go get him. All right, let's go. The two tridrones that landed, they both approach you from opposite sides and they speak in common. Oh. Have, have you, you seen a rogue to the vault? drone? <laughs> oh, um, one at a time, please. Have Do you, you seen, seen entrance, entrance to mono the vault? Drone. One, yes, please let us in the vault. Two, what has this rogue drone done? Beep, bop, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> that was a swear word. Most pretty <laughs> offensive. Both of the tri-drones nod quickly in understanding, and then two of the monodrones fly over, pick them up by the shoulders, and carry them up to the quadrones. One to the right, one to the left. Both of them come back at about the same time, but staggered by a couple of words, so you can understand them a little. You need the correct key the unit to enter is the vault. Malfunctioning. The the rogue mono is malfunctioning. This is some culty shit. I know it's a lot. Also, why did the one in our basement not speak common? We seek the you malfunctioning the unit. Enter the vault. Well, <gasps> go downstairs and try to fix the thing. I normally work with wood, but I think we both should go down because you're more of the technical side of the electronics. You guys, I've told you for the last nine episodes that people can hear you whisper when you do this. Mm -mm, we I'm were real send, quiet I'm this send you time. A shell message. This was all through shell messaging. And then Kanar and I like awkwardly like 
back up. <laughs> yeah. You whistle and they all look towards you like, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. <laughs> if we give you the guy, can you give us the key? Who are you talking to? The right guy or the left guy? The general guy. The right one is the one who said something about the key. Mm-hmm. He nods in understanding. The two monodrones pick him up by the shoulders and he is flown up to communicate with the quadrone. Meanwhile, the other guy continues to repeat. We seek the Dude, malfunctioning unit. I don't unit. love that this quadrone is sending these guys to talk for him. Like, say it to my face. Why doesn't he just come down? <laughs> we seek a malfunctioning unit. <laughs> How is he malfunctioning? What's wrong with him? It nods at you slightly and then gets carried up to the quadrone. Again, with this freaking quadrone. Meanwhile, the other one comes down and says, we do not know of a rogue modron. So they just don't speak to each other at all? The other one flies down. We Modrons work together to serve Primus, our creator. Occasionally, Modrons go rogue and need to be reset. Can I speak to Primus, please? This is like a parlay. I want to speak to your captain. Bring me Primus. <laughs> it flies back up and comes back down and it says, Primus, the god of order, is not available to speak. Can I leave a message? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you guys have reached the bottom of the stairs uh -huh. just mm -hmm. as Hard Heart and Big Eyes turn the corner, each with an arm of this monodrone. I'm telling the little robot, like, hey, man, listen, your people are upstairs. <laughs> They're saying you're malfunctioning. We need to take a look at you so we can fix you. Beep once if you understand. Beep twice if you don't understand. <laughs> Uh, says, They're gonna kill like you. He's gonna die if he doesn't get unmalfunctioned. Bow, 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 bow. He's he's banging out. He's banging on something. You you escaped. I you, would describe to you what Jake is doing with his charades, but like I genuinely have no I, idea. I honestly, it's a lot of thumbs. <laughs> like Flapping. I think you want shoulder pads. It's like, kind of like fifties dancing. Bow, yeah. Bow. Boom. He's saying boom, boom. that the the quad drone. They're boom, talking. Boom. They're, yeah, talking they're talking to each other. Yeah. Boom. About boom. they want to put him down. And they want to kill you. Can I do like a history check on this dude or like an arcana check? Yeah, sure. Um, 16. 16. Okay, mm -hmm. so this thing is a modron. It's a construct that comes from this clockwork plane of complete order. The one who runs that plane is Primus, and mm -hmm. he creates these modrons who are supposed to keep order throughout the universe. All of them supposedly are of the same mind, which is ultimately Primus's mind. Well, clearly, they're conflicted if there's a right side and a left side. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and they don't even know about each other's missions, and they're standing right next to like each other. Brain. Like, I'm an expert tool list. It's one of my things, so I'm really good at... Tool stuff, yeah. Tool stuff. So You're a tinkerer. And I have I have all my tools on me. Maybe see if you can do like a voice modulator or some type of way we can understand them if that's something within your skill set. Uh, I'm going to try to tinker with Ones them. and zeros, you got it. Not a nat that 20. That was a nat 20. Yeah. Oh. Are you serious? Yeah. She makes him speak the king's English. <laughs> yeah, he literally, he turns to me and he's like, hello, mate. <laughs> yeah, you find the perfect little compartment in the back of this thing's head. A little latch springs open. You flip one switch and all of a sudden the bleep, boop, beep, boop, 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 turns into, they're going to murder me if they find me. Why? Why does my voice sound like this? <laughs> You're welcome. What has happened? We are now friends. Do Tell you understand me? Yeah, yes, 100%. we understand you now. Yeah, don't do any more charades. It might be because of this. He opens another thing in his stomach and pulls out a key. We did it! Yeah, not 20, baby! We seek the malfunctioning unit. Um, excuse me a minute. I have to do something. I power walk to Kanara and Yue, and she's just looking at this thing holding a key. Oh no, I'm found out. That was easy. Mo, he speaks now. We understand what he's saying. I'm so much better at tools than I was like earlier this season. I grab <laughs> the key and I'm like, so sorry. And I put it under my shirt. I don't know what to do with it. I'm really happy about everything that happened mm -hmm. in this basement while I was gone. You guys, you guys are growing up so fast. But wait, they'll kill me. Please let me hide. Okay, this robot knows fear. Why would they want to kill you just because you have the key? Did you steal it? I've gone rogue. I was curious on what I was transporting, and I took it for myself to take a look. I performed this action of my own mind, unlike the others like me, who can only carry out one command at a time. Do you, do you like, like, having feelings and stuff? So far, this has been the most exciting two days of my life. Oh, I have buddy. met many new faces. 
some of which can even understand me speaking. This would be so much simpler if I didn't just fall in love with you. Oh, it's hard to be me. Yue is having a really hard time right now. She's like, it's not really that cute, but like I get where <laughs> Mo's coming from. What's your name? Do you have a name? I am Unit One One Three Three Two One Three one, Robo five, One. Five, Let's five, just call nine, him Robo five, One. Four. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers. Can we name him Gecko. We can't just name him. He has a name. His name is Unit. Unit it is. Unit for short. Ugh. I have a name now. Please do not let me die. He's Mo, a slave, I, UA. I'm not saying anything. I haven't said anything yet. What, UA, you don't know what I know say. what you're going to say. No, He's a can slave. I, can I speak? Well, that would be fine. Guys. I think we should you, just hide hey, him. Hey, And I, I cast Pass Without Trace on just the robot. He's invisible now. Very good at hiding now. He's stealthy. Yeah. Figuratively speaking, invisible. He's coated in camouflage all of a sudden. We'll keep you safe, but we need you to guide us so we can find... We don't know. We have whatever we don't even it is we finding. need to find. When you cast Pass Without a Trace on him, his voice changes a little bit. So now it's like, I have seen a thousand feet from my guard post in every direction. I know how to get from here to the door. <laughs> I will cool. gladly guide you. Okay, what I need you to do, Unit, is try not to make any more sounds. If anything were to come down, except for the three people you just talked to. And stay more well hidden than you ever have. This will be my second ever attempt at hiding. How'd he do? With Kanar's modifier, he got a 28 to nice. hide. Oh, yeah. I will hide in that barrel beneath food. Wait, are you are you sanitized? <laughs> it's it too late. Plumes? He's jumped. It's the plumes. He's were... jumped into the the crate of plumes. No. I hope there's not oil on him. <laughs> you wait, can I have the key, please? I take it from out of my shirt. And then I take out my rapier, and I march back upstairs. Okay. If they want to search, they might have to, but he's he's pretty invisible. Uh, I'm just going to keep saying that. May- maybe hide the key and say, what if we do have the key before just presenting it to them? I have my rapier out. I'm the captain. I'm going upstairs. So I go upstairs. I follow Mo upstairs, and I'm getting my spells ready. Okay. It looks the same upstairs. It's still these two things standing there. Yeah, well, they've been pestering nearby members of the crew. I go to the guy who asked me if I needed a key, and I say, okay, I have the key. Are you going to let me in? It nods at you in understanding and flies up to the quadro. Mm-hmm. When it flies back down, it says, thank you for showing us the key. And then... The ten that were with the right side grab each other back up into formation and fly back over the cliff and out of sight. And the other ones, the tridrone that sees you come up with the key says, where did you get that key? But it turns back to the duo drones, the cube-like ones, and goes, boop, 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 boop. they spread out slightly into battle formation, javelins at the ready. It was on a board in the middle of the ocean. A big old hunk of wood with a key on it, and I was like, ugh, that's... That's so cool. That's what those guys wanted. Now we can help out those little robot guys. I love collecting keys too. So yeah, yeah we have a, like a hundred different. Oh my you gosh, you should see my room. <laughs> it's just Key keys, collector. keys, keys. I'll have you make a deception check, and you guys can have the better of your two rolls. I got a twenty-four. Oh. Okay, you, we can keep yours. <laughs> <laughs> the tridrone nods in understanding. Same level of polite as always. Flies up to the quadrone up there, and when it flies back down, it says, "May we search." The premises of your ships. Bish, no! Get off my boat! I told you that there's no one on it. What? Are, what? No! Flies back up. Flies back down and it says, We will search the premises <laughs> of your ships. Oh my god. Okay, so Mo takes the key in her hand, shoves it down her pants, and then she, uh... I don't know. I guess she stabs the first one she sees. No. UA turns backwards <laughs> and she casts her darkness no. below deck where Unit is hiding. Murderer. Yeah, murderer. I was trying to be strategic. I don't want them to look at my bow. Like, let's not start it. Let's wait and see what they see and then be prepared for it is what I'm thinking. After second thought and consulting <laughs> with my friends, I do not stab anything with a rapier. The search is about to commence and mm-hmm. these Madrons need to get their plan in order. The tridrone will fly up to the quadrone. We'll fly back down to the duo drones, which will then pass on orders to the mono drones, which can fly around. This is really <laughs> difficult for Mo to watch. Like Mo goes into the captain's quarters, trying her very best to distract herself from not killing every single one of these creatures. 
every room they'll search in and then if there's a mock bucket tipped over, a monitor drone will call it out and say beep, 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 beep. And a duo drone will say, mm. like that's not what they're looking for. And they'll move on. These people are most worst nightmare. Like something that just points out little mistakes and shit. Like <laughs> One of the monodrones flies into the captain's quarters, sees a stain on Mo's pants, points it out and says, beep, 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 beep. The fury in this cat's body. Like, have you ever seen a cat just completely stop moving because it's so mad? Yeah. So the monodrones, accompanied by a drones, head below deck. Uh, into the darkness that's there and search around. Just a reminder that nobody can actually see, so you don't know that this is actually going on. Oh, that's fine. I like the description. <laughs> I'm just it. letting. I'm just I letting the audience know. Flutter down there. <laughs> so I'm rolling with disadvantage. That's because we got this heavy ass stealth. We have stealth. We have dark vision. We've got like we've prepared. <laughs> now the highest that I rolled uh-huh. is a 19. What? What? What do you mean? But the monodrone that you guys hid with Pass Without a Trace ability hid at 28. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. So it's going to remain undetected. Woo! Nice. All of the modrons return to the deck, report to their superiors, who report to their superiors. The tri-drone is going to approach you, Mo, and say, let us know if you see a defective monodrone unit. Yeah, I'll do that, bud. And then two monodrones fly in, grab it by the shoulders, and fly out of the captain's quarters. <laughs> I just call down to Kanara and I say, Coast clear. Aye, Captain. Everything's good down here as well. Get him out of the plumes and like use some hand sanitizer (laughs) on him or something. Aye, Captain. Then I call the whole crew together. We have a little team meeting. I want Burnt Bill, Nugget, Kanar, UA, Unit. (laughs) On the adventures, Mark. The rest of you, guard the ship with your freaking lives, boys. Hard Heart says... Aye, Captain. We'll be ready to defend. Come back this time. Aww. I look at him and I say, If I don't come back, that means I'm dead. But do not make one of those weird little robot things your new captain, okay? Just assume that the ocean killed me and make the ocean your captain. Aye, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really poetic as it was. <laughs> make the ocean your captain. We all move over to the adventurers, Mark. Anchors up. So you guys sail into the little carved-in area in the side of the canyon until you're about 20 feet from the door, the gigantic stone door, where you're going to have to lay anchor and hop off the ship and approach. Uh, Captain? Yeah? Would it be a good idea to alter unit's appearance? We could paint them, chisel them. I might have a spell, but I don't. I didn't ready it. How's this? <laughs> and he's got an eye patch covering his single eye, a pirate's cap, and a bandana. Unit, can you see right now? Not a wink. I cut a little peephole. <laughs> okay, so it's an eye patch with a hole where the eye yeah. goes? Yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so now he's in a disguise. <laughs> it's so flawless. <laughs> Burn Bill, and I think Nuggy, I want you to stay with the ship. I want you to keep it safe. Me, Kanar, Yue, and Lil Unit. I'm going to go through this gate. Oh, I didn't even know you were here. You've been completely just off camera. I don't even know. <laughs> no, I think he was doing his nails. They look really good. He's sharpening them. <laughs> okay, whatever. Durbin, you come too. Let's go. So you guys approach the entrance, the ornate pattern door with the key. But you find that there is no keyhole. Instead, as you look above and you see the star that's on the top of it, it opens eyes on all of the five points. This is a pentadrone. It's just like all the others, except it's star-shaped. I take the key and I hold it up above my head. It's like a very victorious epic moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. very Lord of the Ring-ish. Moe's definitely front and center. I see that. Kanar and I are like a little bit behind her. The pentadrone looks down at you with its five eyes, looks at the key, and then it rotates in place in the door as if turning gears. The door parts in the center and opens to reveal darkness beyond. And then... I don't know. I guess we look at the lamp and... Yeah, I pull it out and I hand it to Mo. Okay, lamp. Where do you want us to go? This is the X. Bright blue thin lettering appears on it that says one word. Four word. Okay. <sighs> you guys take the first step towards this open gate and the pentadrone up above, it says... Remember, none come out. Hmm. Uh, we have to go forward, Captain. 
Why? <laughs> uh, perhaps one of the wishes could be used to escape. Are we even sure that there are wishes anymore? Because why would everyone who walks in here die if this is where the magic genie lives? It never said die. It only said none come out. Oh, so there's just like a society of happy people in here who have found this genie lamp? Could be a wordplay. We're some, not none. Anyways, we don't have a better way out. We either face Robert Coward with whatever evil thing he has coming with us next, or we go forward and try to beat him to the punch. Let's go. And then Mo takes some steps forward. Darkness greets you from the large corridor and the smell of old. As the clockwork ticking stops behind you and the stone door is dragged closed, you are immersed in total darkness. From behind the doors, muffled as if miles away, you hear cannon fire. Robert is here. Oh my gosh, we just left everyone and then we can't even go back and help them. Who knows? We'll find out next time on Roll For It. Oh, Bill. (laughs) Guys, we didn't kill anything. Oh, but we we killed it. it. We were super witty, right? right? I mean, I honestly, maybe it would have been harder if you hadn't rolled that nat 20 to make him just tell us everything. (laughs) (laughs) We're moving into episode 10 now. How is everybody's characters feeling after the events of episode 9? At the very end of episode 9, Robert has caught up. So part of him is like he he wishes he could have been out there to settle the score and set the trap more properly. But he has no choice but to kind of focus on what's ahead of him now. And that's where his attention is shifting to be. UA from the episode before is just like really trying to like do right for both of them. She's really trying to be like a pleaser right now. I think she's pretty anxious about the whole thing and she just wants to get it done. And so she's gonna go forward like no matter what. And yeah, the cannon fire, pretty scary. Like not a good thought. That's a really hard thing to walk away from. I mean, Mo is always one foot out the door. She's torn between this like, I finally have friends, so I guess I'm gonna support them. And also like, why are we walking into the store right now? It feels like there's other things we could do. There's no way to run. And she hates that. What happens in the epic conclusion of season three? Oh, it's so close, so close, so close. Thank you, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I really like that, Kelsey. I like was gonna add on to it, but I liked it. So good ending. Thanks. Peace. Out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's time for a shout out to our patrons. Thank you all so much for continuing to listen and enjoy the show. So here are your pirate names. Handsome Dom GP, Pranav Splinter Bapanadu, Jennifer Shaded Angles, The Royal No Knees Tut, Lexi Barnacle Jin. Love you all. Happy trails. Happy sails. Heh.